greetings, brothers and sisters. We thank the uh, one God for blessing us to be present. We thank him for the divine wisdom and his perfect understanding. We thank him as always for the prophets. And as always, we thank him for the apostles. For those of you that uh, <coughs> don't know, God willing, we may be in Florence, South Carolina next uh, week. Sister Alfred passed away late last night. And Brother Alfred, uh, uh, he called us as soon as she was announced uh, dead. So what day next week will the burial be? I don't know. Uh, but I hope it be towards the weekend of next week. If so, I pretty much uh, just will stay throughout the weekend so I can preach at the Florence Church that Sunday morning. But remember Brother Alfred and uh, his family in prayer that God may strengthen them and keep them and preserve them. Brother, uh, well, most of you know that Deacon Collins passed. Uh, I got a chance to talk to his daughters. At his request, he wanted to be cremated. <clears throat> so the Sunday of the uh, closing of the conference, he passed away at 2 o'clock that Sunday. Tuesday of that week, he was cremated and whatnot. Uh, the daughter told me that he, uh, all the way up to the end at the hospital, he pretty much was alert, was aware, you know. And, uh, he told his daughter, just whatever you do, do quickly. Moment I die, don't hook me up to no respirator, no anything. Just rush me out of there and let me go to ashes. So I didn't realize that Mother uh, Collins was so, I guess, incoherent. She, she's a uh, mind comes and goes. I didn't know she was bedridden didn't at all. But I got a chance to talk to her for a little bit, and uh, he was able to come and go and whatnot, but we talked a long time to his daughters. I was taking care of her. Mother Arthur was doing, well, semi-good until uh, she had a kidney transplant. She had a kidney transplant and her body rejected. I mean, you're going through dialysis, you get a certain age and your body physically is already weak and sickly. And then they start opening you up and think about it when they give you the uh, kidney transplant. Uh, it was internal bleeding that was on the inside. So they went back and opened her up again. Still couldn't find the bleeding. In fact, I think they opened her up maybe three times, if I'm not mistaken, at least two or three times. And still never found the bleeding. They couldn't locate it, but they knew it was taking place. And, you know, from that point on, she just went downhill, 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 downhill. downhill. He called me about, mm, I think it was about 10.51. Last night, 10:51 or 11:51, so she passed. So, as I said, I don't know what day uh, it's going to be, but uh, once we are informed, then we'll, we'll let you know when we bury her. Bury her. Uh, and then the following week, we go to Jamaica. a grueling, grueling trip. We go to Jamaica the following week. We get back from Jamaica on the 27th. On the 28th, the very next day, which I only have time to come home and eat and go to sleep. The next day on the 28th, we, we'll be on the plane going to Norfolk, Virginia. On the 28th. On the 29th, while we're in Norfolk, the Lord answered our prayer. I, I've been pulling on God will bless us with Rocky Mount and Newport News Temple before this year go out and he done just that we make settlement we make settlement on the 
Newport News Temple, the 29th. Amen. So, that's a blessing. Amen. So, you got good news and bad news, you know. Death is as common as life. Some cases you prepared for both, some cases you're not. But in the midst of death, I often say life go on. Death affects people in different ways. Some show it, some don't. In my case, I find it just exhausting mentally, physically, emotionally. Constantly going back and forth to the cemeteries. That's what I find draining. Because it's something that I prefer not to do. We got a call from Europe today. Uh, who's been getting calls from Zimbabwe, South Africa, or the Geneva contact? Zimbabwe want to send um, Zimbabwe, South Africa want us there next year. So God willing, we'll be making plans. We'll have some dates for you. to go into a Zimbabwe, a congregation between eight and 10,000 people. Uh, so from Zimbabwe, we have to make plans for India, South India. And then there's a minister who wants to come to Ethiopia. If I ever say your gift will make room for you. I'm only one man. I, I wish, you know, the Bible says men have sought out many inventions. I really wish that somebody who's honest and fear the Lord would invent the transporter room <laughs> at Star Trek. You know, um, I, the, the convention was the first week that I've really been home for a solid week since about the middle of September. Every week in October, we were gone. But it, it, it takes that to build. I'm glad we don't, uh, we can rely on God to make provision. I'm glad that the people in Newport News and Rocky Mountain had a mind to work. I mean, they're working too, brother. You know, I, I think of, uh, came time to, settlement for the Rocky Mountain place. <clears throat> we had to bring a check down for close to 53000 and it was all in. Uh, so we make settlement for the Newport News Temple. Uh, we already have 5000 on it. The bank's has given us 107000 So we have to and come down with probably 53 or 55,000. So, I mean, both areas is good. I mean, in Rocky Mountain, we only got a monthly mortgage of 800 and something dollars for about, what, I think 15 years. And uh, you know the way I am. We ain't waiting for 15 years to pay it off, you know. And with Newport News, we only got a monthly mortgage for only 900 and something dollars for 15 years, so which is good because of it. I mean, if we go in these areas, the church won't even be able to hold the people, so that's why I have to get college campuses. <coughs> Rocky Mountain see in possibly 200. Uh, Newport News, in fact, I meant to bring the videotape of the Newport News Temple down here to show it to you, uh, let y'all get a chance to see it. It's a nice looking place. Uh, Seat about uh, maybe 225, 250, sitting on about a half acre of land. And plus, we were on the lot, a big lot across the street from the church. Rocky Mountain sitting on three quarters of an acre. I love the way that church sits. It's right off the major street, Raleigh, I think it's Raleigh Boulevard. Oh, Things joke to me. I think it's Raleigh Boulevard or Raleigh Road. <coughs> it's a major street. The moment you make a, a left, 
on the stoats. You can see the, the steeple of the church. Like one, you know how you ride to a prison and that one long street? That's where you can see the church, is that long street. You can see the church. The church is L shaped. You got your auditorium, then you got your dining area and office. So it's good. Insurance agency is saving us about mm, maybe about thirteen, fourteen hundred. The city wants to charge us sixteen hundred dollars to turn the lights on. The federal government through the insurance agency had a program. You go through your insurance company, they can get it on for only two hundred and fifty dollars. I tell them we're taking two hundred and fifty dollars away. <laughs> So sometimes cheap is good. <laughs> you know, when you can pay less, why pay more? <laughs> so God is good the first church. Right. That's true. He has proven himself moreover. Mm -hmm. As I was telling the brother last night, I you know, I thought of the days of Samson. At Samson Inn, God gave him greater victory at the end. Lord have blessed the church so greatly at the end of the year and all the battles we had at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Never thought he had us in a, in, in, in a headlock. If you know the thing about wrestling, to every wrestling hole there's a counter move. That's right. That's true. To every wrestling hole there's a counter move. That's right. To every hole or everything that Satan ever bring up against the church, there's a scriptural counter move. So, uh, you know, uh, folks been do the same thing they're hinting and trying for years, you know. First church ain't going nowhere. We don't want as far as we can and all that type of I don't put that stuff in my mind. Mm -hmm. The Lord already spoke to us years ago before I met any of you. <laughs> so, anything that come contradict what he says all late now, God have already spoken. So we've got Rocky Mount through the grace of God. We have uh, Newport News. And we're still pushing. I didn't know it. Uh, we won't be already on Birmingham. I didn't know. At least you ain't telling me nothing. I learned from uh, Danny Man Stasiak. We're already in Birmingham, Alabama now. That's good, isn't it? You know. Did you get any information on that uh, Pennsylvania public broadcast station? Okay. Also, Next year, the youth conference will be held in Rocky Mountain. It's going to be held in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Uh, she talked to you already, she gave you those days. We're going to take two days to be at the new temple. And that Saturday and Sunday, we'll be at the school because the temple's just not going to be able to hold. The school's not going to be able to hold the people either. But uh, we're jamming in there anyway. I had the uh, pleasure of meeting two old gentlemen tonight. They came up to my office talking to me. One owned a restaurant down Clear, uh, Clearfield Avenue. I think he called it, what is it, Old Tony's Old Boys? What is it? Tony, poor Tony. Poor Tony. <laughs> so the owner came and talked to me and uh, he said he'd been wanting to meet me for quite some time. He said, you come to my restaurant? I got two big 35 inch screens. He said, you know who be on there every day, seven days a week? He said, you. I say, yeah. He said, well, I play your telecast every day. He said, some of my customers get up and leave. He said, if y'all think y'all going to see anything else in here, <laughs> y'all not. I, you know, I had to laugh up there. And, uh, you know, so. <laughs> he tickled me. He said, I can't believe I'm really talking to you. He said, I was baptized, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost when I was seven. He said, now I think I'm 60. I think he said 63. He said, I want to be baptized correct now in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I want to get myself right. He said, I got a beautiful restaurant, been in business over 35 years, and uh, I'd rather get myself to the Lord. He said, he said, see, you tell it like it is. You just tell it like it is. It ain't no fancy, no nothing. You just put people in hell, don't mind telling them. <laughs> I said, I appreciate you, you know, playing the uh, program and you place a bit. He said, it's the best thing that ever came in there. 
He said, I, I want to get TVs all over the business. <laughs> so everywhere they turn, they can see back then. <laughs> I was saying to myself, you must not want no business. <laughs> But uh, it's quite a bit of places uh, that does that. I remember one brother telling me he was coming from way up Jersey and was at a traffic light. And, you know, there was a big Burger King. And he said he saw the telecast guys just coming through the Burger King windows. And people just dead getting their order just looking. You know? So it's a blessing, the, the, the effect that it's having on people. So next year we look to go to India. We look to go to Zimbabwe. Look to go to uh, oh, who, who knows where else, but India and Zimbabwe are the two places on our agenda for next year, along with the usual travel to the foreign countries. We are contact with the Zimbabwe by letter and let them know when the meeting can take place in South Africa, and I do hope that uh, he's able to come. But again, remember Brother Alfred and his. Uh, children in prayer that God may strengthen them and uh, I told him well I'm not going to bother you I, we talked to you over the weekend from New Orleans and, uh, and uh, we can see what day she's going to be buried and we'll fly down there and bury her and uh, just stay down there like I said and preach that Sunday morning then Saturday, uh, I ride over to Rocky Mountain to work at the Rocky Mountain Church Saturday. Let me ready to preach on Sunday. All right, let me touch it down with the Bible some. Pray that God give us strength because I'm telling you, I'm, I'm physically exhausted. I really am. And the... I want to kind of... Brief you a little bit. In reference to the seven sons of the woman who was bitterly persecuted, give me the eighth chapter, Second Maccabees. Second Maccabees, chapter eight, and verse one. Mm -hmm. Then Judas Maccabeus and they that were with him went privately into the towns. They called their kin's folks together and took unto them all such as continue in the Jews' religion mm -hmm. and assembled about 6,000 men. And they called upon the Lord that he would look upon the people that was trodden down of all mm -hmm. and also pity the temple profaned of ungodly men and that he would have compassion upon the city, sword defaced and ready to be made even with the ground and hear the blood that cried unto him. You hear that? Hmm. The turn, a reference to the ground, and hear the blood that cried unto him. Mm -hmm. That statement was first made when mm -hmm. Cain right. slayed Abel. Mm -hmm. And the Lord asked, what have you done? Thine brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And remember the wicked slaughter of the harmless infants and the blasphemies committed against his name. Back in those days, the Jews <coughs> held strictly to the law of Moses. Whatever king was in authority were strictly against Moses' law. And everything in his power to turn the Jews from God. It took killing the children, the king done Kill families, the king done it. Five, a good example. In the New Testament, when Saul was converted, mm -hmm. but if you take note before Saul's conversion, the Bible specifically states what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He received letters from the king. That's right. Going to the house, hailing men and women, which means here come in your house. Tossing you around, slapping you around, throwing you around. <coughs> Based upon what you believed. Because of what you believe can bring a lot of havoc upon you. 
especially when your belief is in God. Belief in God causes you to lose friends. Belief, belief in God can cause you to lose a job. Belief in God can cause your marriage to fall apart. I want to say, well, how can that be? If you have two minds in the house, one mind is spiritual and one is not, then you have two rivals in the house. The spiritual minded man or woman is going to always strive to look at those things and do those things to please God. The carnal minded man or woman will always strive to do those things to oppose God. So therefore, it is written, how the spirit lusts against the flesh and this flesh against the spirit, these are contrary one to the other. So you won't have much peace. Some way, somehow, you're going to have war. Even though the spirit of truth was not yet made manifest in the days of Moses, because it wasn't time, so Moses' law stood supreme. So the persecution fell upon the church in the wilderness because of their belief sticking to the commandments, their dedication to God, because they felt as though they were obligated to him, and they were. Listen. And remember the wicked slaughter of harmless infants. Harmless infants. And the blasphemies committed against his name. Mm -hmm. And that he would show his hatred against the wicked. Now when Maccabeus had his company about him, he could not be withstood by, his, by the heathen. Mm -hmm. For the wrath of the Lord was turned into mercy. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Maccabees was a warrior, brother. Right. I love to read about him. Mm -hmm. I was one tough man. Mm -hmm. Didn't mind a good fight. Mm -hmm. And was one that would never back down from a fight. Because he knew God was with him. Amen. Listen. Therefore he came at unawares, and burned up towns and cities, mm -hmm. and got into his hands the most commodious places, and overcame and put to flight no small number of his enemies. Mm -hmm. But specially took he advantage of the night for such private attempts, and so much that the brute of his manliness was spread everywhere. <laughs> oh, Maccabees had a reputation, brother. He used the night to come in, Elliot. Why? At night, most people have their guard down. That's right. Unprepared, very relaxed, very comfortable. Maccabees knew when to get you. Mm -hmm. Well, if you take note of the coming of the Lord, that's right. it's compared to as a thief in the night. That's right. Because that's the time, not necessarily nighttime, right. but he compared it to a thief in the night, which <coughs> means most people have their guard down. They are unprepared mentally, emotionally. They're just totally unprepared. Because when the Lord comes, you must not only be prepared spiritually, but you must be prepared in here. Because your heart got to be right. That means you can't hate no one, can't hold no grudges, no ill in your heart. No hatred, just alone, no hatred. No hatred? You know it's not that many going to be saved. There's one scripture even says, just a few going to be saved. Mm -hmm. So when Philip saw that this man increased by little and little, mm -hmm. and that things prospered with him still more and more, he wrote to, unto Ptolemies, the governor of Silo, Syria, and Phoenix, to yield more aid to the king's affairs. Then forthwith choosing Nicanor, the son of Patroclus, mm -hmm. one of his special friends, he sent him with no fewer than 20,000 of all nations under him mm -hmm. to root out the whole generation of the Jews. And with him he joined un also Gorgias, a captain who in matters of war had great experience. Listen, you got to have experience to be a warrior. That's right. Like Bush and these young boys over there in the front line. The only experience them guys have is looking at war on a simulator machine. You know, like a Tendo. Which is totally different than getting a real gun in your hand and going out there shooting. Inexperience. That's right. 
and experience 18, 19, 20, 21 in body bags with no God. What's that medal they give you when you're supposed to do something above the call of duty? A purple heart. Think of it. For me, as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to do something above the call of duty, you stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you, you really stupid. <laughs> because basically, you're going beyond what you even require. Just being there is dangerous enough. And I'm not going beyond what you want me to do. You know, then I'm dead. My heart really is purple then because that blood can stop circulating. <laughs> going beyond the call of duty, get a purple heart. You ain't got no arms, no legs, but you get a medal on your chest. That's madness. Come on, brother. So when Nick God, <laughs> so Nicanor undertook to make so much money of the captive Jews, mm -hmm. as should defray the tribute of two thousand talents, which the king was to pay to the Romans. Yeah. Wherefore immediately he sent to the cities upon the sea coast, proclaiming a cell of the captive Jews, and promising that they should have four score and ten bodies for one talent, mm -hmm. not expecting the vengeance that was to follow upon him from the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Now when word was brought unto Judas of Nicanor's coming, and and he oh, had Nick was coming, wasn't it? That's right. This now when word was brought unto Judas of Nicanor's coming. And he had imparted unto those that were with him that the army was at hand. They that were fearful and distrusted the justice of God fled and conveyed themselves away. Others sold all that they had left, and withal besought the Lord to deliver them, mm -hmm. being sold by the wicked Nicanor before they met together. And if not for their own sakes, yet for the covenants he had made with their fathers, and for his holy and glorious name's sake, by which they were called. So Maccabeus called his men together unto the number of six thousand, and exhorted him not to be stricken with terror of the enemy, nor to fear the great multitude of the heathen, who came wrongfully against them, but to fight manfully. To fight how? But to fight manfully. That's the kind of men I love to have. Mm -hmm. Don't need no cowards. Fight manfully when you go through something, you got to endure it manfully. Manfully means the willingness to endure. Back in those days, you was justified in taking a life. But to do it manfully, you, can't be, you couldn't be scared to take one, and you couldn't be scared to give one. Well, in God, one must not be afraid to give their life if need be. Now, that's asking quite a bit. You know, a lot of folks say, you know, I, I, I give my life for this thing, for this thing. They always call it the thing. The thing. It's easy to say you give your life for something that you ain't never been, you know, threatened about. But Maccabees and the warriors of old, they fought for God. Back in those days, to fight for God, you, you, you issued a whole battle. A whole battle was proclaimed. Hundreds and thousands of people were slain on behalf of the name of the Lord. To uphold God back in those days, you had to take a life. That was good. <laughs> to uphold God back in those days, you had to take a life. When it, when it came time, because when your enemy came to fight, to fight you, you had to fight. You couldn't drop your sword and shield and go running. And that's the way many folks are now. They talk of a good fight. They got good sound speech. They endure with their mouth. They have lip endurance. Hmm? Yeah, it's lip endurance. But the Bible said, their heart is far from me. And as a result, Jesus said, in vain do they worship me. So it becomes vain. It's worthless. You know, lip service now, I, I haven't paid it no mind a while ago. 
I'm just getting worse. I don't pay too much mind now at all. I'm, I'm almost at ground zero with it. Because people talk, talk, talk. They talk love, they talk work, they talk sticking with you. Time brings all that to surface. That's what it did with Jesus. Judas was hanging around there with him, wasn't he? I wish I could have met old Jew. I wish I could have met him. You know, he was a money lover. Sure. He loved money. Anytime you're going to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, you value money over teaching. In fact, you value earthly things over wisdom. I wouldn't want to be in Judas' shoes for nothing. Until all the ones, you know, when you hook up with those ones for money, they end up turning on him. Then he hangs himself, commits suicide. And when I think about all that, it was the Lord that selected him. Listen. And to set before their eyes the injury that they had unjustly done to the holy place mm -hmm. and the cruel handling of the city whereof they made a mockery and also the taking away of the government of their forefathers for they, for they said he trust in their weapons and boldness but our confidence is in the almighty God what is it? But our confidence is in the almighty God that's the only one you can trust in that's right people put their confidence in weapons and, and their skill of deceit and their skill of wickedness to try to destroy the work of God. Our confidence is in God, man. Question, son? Is it cool to go to seminary school? Study to be a preacher? No. The Lord ain't down with that. No, he ain't down with that. There's God to make a preacher, son. God made the prophets of old. God made the apostles. Right. Philosophy, the, strip, the scriptures teach against philosophy. Mm -hmm. Notice the book of Colossians, if you will. Colossians chapter, chapter 2, two, if I'm Colossians correct. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. And this is what you learn in seminary school. You learn philosophy. Mm -hmm. and the scripture teaches in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware. Look out. Lest any man spoil you. Lest any man spoil you. Through philosophy. Through philosophy. And vain, and vain deceit. Deceit. Mm -hmm. What is it? After the tradition of men. You see, you don't learn God's way in those schools. You learn the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. You learn the wickedness of the world. And not after Christ. You don't learn the things of God. That's right. Philosophy don't teach you one God. Teaches Trinity, three of them. You go to seminary school, you coming out, you come out, believe everything else other than what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. See, philosophy, seminary school make you an educated false prophet. <laughs> it takes God to make you a preacher. That's right. God make you a preacher. He make you a warrior. Mm -hmm. Be able to stand in battle. You know how to fight. Mm -hmm. Seminary school boys, they come out punks. That's right. Put it to you plain. They come out carrying the Bible, but they're religious punks. They can't fight. I fight all of them and beat them all. If God make you, he give you a sport in your back. Go to seminary school, you come out a punk, a religious chump. You ain't got no board in your back. That's right. You run up on somebody like me that'll slap you over with the Bible. You just got a bunch of degrees on your hand. I come with no degrees at all and still beat you up. That's right. So it takes God to make you. Mm -hmm. These fellas like, you know, you see on television like Benny Hinn and Jakes and all these Creflo Dollar. I'm a school boys. That's why they're not teaching nothing with substance. They're all about hyping the people and getting the people excited. Mm -hmm. You can be excited and be lost. True. God make a preacher. His objective and his aim is not focused on exciting you, but to give you insight, to broaden the understanding of your mind. And when you have a good understanding, you know how to lead the people in the 
right direction. So you think about going to seminary school, no, you better off going to Lake Erie, try to fish. At least you may catch something. All right? All right. That's that. Back in Second Maccabees chapter 8 and at verse 18. Yeah. For they said he, trust in their weapons and boldness. They trust in what? In their weapons and boldness. They trust in weapons mm -hmm. and boldness. But our confidence. Our confidence. Is in the almighty God. He and he alone. Brought me up to this present point, just he alone. We have gotten some encouragement from people, but it is something I don't look for because I learned if you look for it, you're going to have the biggest disappointment in life because you would hardly ever get it. So I have to look to God, you know. Really, you have to look to God. You can be around a lot of people and still be alone. You have to look to God, man. You know, I done lived through treason, I done lived through betrayal, I done lived through lying on, and most of the ones that I lived through was heel of my sock and my yakaba boomba. You know, speaking in some type of tongue. Peter Packer pick a panging and all that jerking and, you know, jerk turkey going on. You know, I, I done lived through it until, here, a bunch of jerk turkeys. You know, so. It taught me. Yeah, oh yes, it taught me. It taught me. I, God knows it taught me. And yet, I expect for the scriptures to be fulfilled in every perspective. The thing is, you don't know through whom, and you don't know when. But you do know at whatever point in time and whatever method God deemed necessary, whatever's in the person is going to be made manifest whether it's love or hate. It's true. Hate and love will be made manifest because it is those two items that will be a contributing factor to your destiny in eternity, whether with God or with the devil. Listen. But our confidence is in the Almighty God. Our confidence is in the Almighty God. Who had a beck can cast down both them that come against us mm -hmm. and also all the world. I bear witness. <laughs> oh, the devil was rejoicing and oh God. For walking around panicking, what are we going to do? What we... <laughs> sure. I had to lean on God, man. I have to look to God. I don't look for people to pull me out of nothing. I look for people to put me in things. That, that's, that's exactly where it is. People put you in things. You have to look to God to get you out. People put you in and then stand back and see what you get out. And then tell somebody, they'll never get out of this. They don't know nothing about wrestling. Jacob was a wrestler. I don't think he had no tag team part. But he was a wrestler. Paul was a wrestler. Paul was a wrestling man. He was a mat technician. Amen. Job was a wrestler. What do you mean? One who's willing to endure mental, emotional, physical pain. Be it short term or long term. The willingness to endure is something that God must place in them. And then at the end, the one thing about the devil, he knows submission holes too. That devil throws a submission hole on you. Especially the sleeper. Make people get unconscious. Then when they're about to count you out, you got to let them know I'm not out. Get that hand moving. And let the folk know I'm still here. You know, but see a lot of people, you know. They can't take things that catch them off guard. They lose, they lose focus, they lose sight. It's like getting hit in the head and run wild. And I related to that because I remember seeing a cat get hit by a car. And the cat just ran crazy. It jumped up and just would start running. It ran into the wall head first. Pow! 
ran into a tree head first. Bow! Ran into a car tire. I mean, just kept running until the witness went back in the street and then fell out dead. So first it ran crazy. And that's the way people are. You know why? They have not yet prepared their heart. They haven't prepared their heart yet. Learn something about God's way. You must prepare yourself for the unexpected. What I went through this year is all in yet. I done lived through Ananijah. And I done lived through letters from Jezebel. Jezebel said the Lord did this, that, and the other. She proclaimed she got the Lord in her. I don't live through all that. That's true. And at the end, two churches, beautiful conference, more souls came in, more been baptized. Out of all those troubled water, out of all that troubled water, first church ain't stopped yet. And we ain't gonna stop either. Ain't stopping. And all that Peter walked on water. See, and that's that's what I was experiencing. I was walking on water. You know why? I was by all means I refuse to allow the devil to master or dictate my emotions. He's gonna cause me to backslide or leave the church and go church hopping or go look around for preachers. And I end up knowing more than what they know. I ain't wasting that kind of time. <laughs> Go sit down to preach and I know more than what he know. That's <laughs> stupid. Is. Most of the preachers, some of the sisters here know more than a lot of what they preach. That's true. And they go sit and just look at them. <sighs> then they become bored because they ain't getting nothing. So they try to make well enough to do. You can, you, that's not going to work. Not gonna work. I ate Gerbil's food when I was a baby. I have Gerbil beans and Gerbil beets. Now I want some real greens. One thing about endurance, it, it teaches you, it develops you, it matures you if you let it. Yeah, but this year he came and oh, and Ananijah just took off and said first church was finished. It amazed me how people say things that God didn't say. God have talked to me before I met any of you. Before I met anybody following me now. It may sound boastful, you know, some of the brothers was, but not some. Kept complaining. They talk about Pastor Dennis too much. There ain't no one else around here God's in. That's right. That's right. What God do, he sent a man, and they make everything revolve around him. That's true. That's right. If you read the Bible, that's what he always done. Mm -hmm. He sent a man. Who else is the people hearing on television? That's right. Who else are the people writing to? God is doing it. I can't help if God bless us to go somewhere and we get results. Somebody else can go somewhere and don't get nothing. Right. It's the Lord's doing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm one of those ones through the grace of God that can get results. I don't want to go somewhere and get a whole lot of nothing. Mm -hmm. I want some results. If the Bible said God added daily. Mm -hmm. God, I think of uh, Rocky Mountain. Right. Baptized close to 60 people and only been there four times. Talked to the brothers there, they said, Pastor Jennings, at the Boys and Girls Club, they said, man, the place was full to the back. When you think how God can give us favor with, with a center radio, with a, with a center television station, we only supposed to have been aired in Rocky Mountain once a week. But to be aired about 21 or 25 times in a week, that's truly the Lord's doing. About 21 or 25 times in a week, Amen. stations is airing us extra time with no extra charge at all. Amen. That's the Lord's doing. That's right. To be able to go into the prisons 
and souls come to be baptized, to go inside of a prison and hit hard like this, and men get upset, and the power of God just keep them under. You can look at the anger in some of their faces, and God just keep them under. They would like to do something, and God just keep them under. Folk don't have no experience with God. You know, it's like the message I was thinking about that God gave was about having a vision. You got to have a vision. That's right. Prophet Habakkuk, give me that. Some scholars pronounce the name Habakkuk. Habakkuk, Habakkuk. Sound like you're about to spit a little bit. Notice the prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2. Begin at verse 1. And at verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. Mm -hmm. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me. That's what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. Watching to see what God's going to say to me. Mm -hmm. When people tell me a thing won't be, I don't pay them no mind. A preacher called me from out from uh, Georgia. I remember Hadley called me from Georgia not that long ago. He said, "I heard everybody left the church; the whole church fell apart." I said, "Well, if you if you call, you know, a new work in Marisha falling apart and baptizing close to sixty people less than a year falling apart and souls coming in almost every week here in Philadelphia going on the water either Tuesday, Thursday, or Sunday." I said, if you call that falling apart, then we're in a mess. <laughs> it's a good mess. You know, there's some mess is good. Act a pig. <laughs> you know, I'm indicting in a good thing. I said, no, man. I said, that'd never be. I said, what you repeat is, is the desire of the enemy. Yeah. You know, the desire of the enemy. Come on with me. Where you want me to go? They got the word. What they got? What do you call the word? The only thing you can preach to me is the baptism and the Holy Ghost and, how, and, and letting everybody know you got one or you got one wife, Holy Ghost baptism, one wife. I can I can say that repeatedly in different tone voice. One wife, <laughs> baptism, Holy Ghost. All right. What are you gonna give me more? That's right. That world out there, I need something to guide me through everyday life. Everyday. All the things of life. He, no, what did he have? He didn't want the body to deal with him. That's right. That's what it was. Amen. He was trying to get himself out of the headlock of God. <laughs> God got him in a headlock that's permanent. That's right. Dirty hair. <laughs> hmm? The first hour of that discussion, I believe, come on this this Sunday. We gonna run that program. <laughs> we gonna run it. We gonna run it. Run it. Right. And then the next telecast, I, what I want to do is a telecast that where I'm addressing all the callers, everyone that called in about the program. I want to just do with the callers. That was my objective when I mentioned, you know, you got called and you got a chance to call in, you know, because I'm pretty sure the dirty heretites, <laughs> you got heretites, dirty Harry followers, they going to call, dirty Harry himself may call in. <laughs> That'd be nice, my God, I want to shake them and bake them. So, because what, what people don't realize, history is being made. That's right. That's true. History is being made at First Church, and folk don't even know it. That's true. Don't even know it. You know, they don't. They sit there looking at it, don't even know it. <laughs> they got sister enough to even realize it. That's so true. History is being made. That's right. Sometimes years got to pass by you first. Yeah. Then, you, then you'll look back and be like, Oh my God, I didn't think you're right. Most folk don't. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Listen. And will watch to see what he will say unto me, uh -huh. and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Yeah. And the Lord answered me, and said, Write the vision. Write mm -hmm. the vision. 
and make it plain upon tables. Make it plain upon tables that he may run he that, 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 that whoever read it they can run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Listen at this. Mm -hmm. Whenever God show a man something, it's always for a particular time. <laughs> when I think of how when I was on Twenty Fourth Street, hey, me Williams and Ike, you know. We'll sit up one, two, three, four, five in the morning in the summertime. And I'm telling them all about what we're doing now. I mean, just telling them. Might be like, well, I wish you'd hurry up and come. I'm tired of keep going over there, man. I wish you'd hurry up and come. I said, in time, in time. William's like, you mean to tell me we're going to be doing all that? I said, yeah. <laughs> he couldn't see it. The only thing, see, and, and, and I'm brothers and sisters, your brother. I'm a living witness. It's for an appointed time. The first vision that God gave me of the work, I was maybe like about 15 or 16. I was young. And I didn't understand that stuff. But I knew one thing, I had sense enough to know whenever God says something, it just has to be true. Have to be. And you know, you know I think of when I, when me, Ike, and Soup would talk about it, we like, you know, 16, 17, 18, and now we're 41, you know, and, and, and to look back then, because they couldn't see it. They couldn't. I, when I told my brother Chris about it, you know, Chris was the educator, you know, dude why is it, you know. He's the educated one. Chris <laughs> thought I was stupid. He did, man. I was on a three day and three night fast. He was living in Bucks County, been selling. And I stayed in his place for those three days, those three days and three nights. And never forget, we went out in the park and I sat and talk, told him about the things God was showing me. He was like, <laughs> He showed you all that, huh? Yeah. You know, really, he showed you all that. You know, and he, you know, then later on, when I was talking later on in years, he said, you remember when you came to Ben Seller? I was telling you all that. I was like, yeah. He said, he said, I can tell you now. He said, boy, I thought you lost it. He said, boy, I thought you was just as fool as you can be. He said, because he already made plans to move down south, live down south, you know, follow his medical career, you know, because Chris was so, is so reputable throughout Philadelphia in the medical area. I mean, all the hospitals know him, but he was a, there was a preacher in Baltimore named Bishop Shawwell, who had the largest apostolic faith church in Baltimore with about six or 7,000 followers. At the time, Chris left Hinton and went in Bonner's organization with Dr. Clark in Trent. Dr. Clark made Chris the assistant pastor of the church and put him over the radio. Chris was over the radio talking his hermeneutics and his stuff, you know, y'all like big talk. I mean, he was gone well, 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 uh, uh, and when Gabriel come and uh, sit on the stone, and, uh, Chris was doing all that crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, Chris was. Yes, he was. <laughs> so they they took they had a big meeting in Baltimore, right? So Doctor Clark was scheduled to preach at Bishop Shawwell's church. Six or seven thousand people. So Dr. Clyde get up and say, "Well, well, I got one of my one of my sons here with me, and I, I'm I'm going. You know, you got to do all that just to more sit down. You know, you get up there, I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit down. Just say you're going to sit down. So he put Chris up that night. Chris Chris had me to laugh. He said, "Gee." He said, Nick, there was like 7,000 people. He said, I freaked out. I was pulling all the philosophy out the bag. He said, everything I can think of. He said, man, I, he said, the people went wild. Bishop Shawwell was getting up. Preach, boy. Preach, boy. 
Shawwell wanted to sign his church over to Chris, over to Deke, and wanted him to take over as pastor of 7,000 people. Wanted Deke to take it over. Man, Deke was laying that talk down, that super califragilistic espiala <laughs> dosages. I mean, that seven ubiquitous illuminary and all that. Oh, Dick was saying all that stuff. <laughs> Everything. Charles, well, Dick said he looked all the doctors of the Vinnies and the PhDs was all up in the roster. He said he had them all just standing. Go ahead, you know, and them churches, they'll run up to you and just pat you on the shoulder. Preach, boy, preach, boy. Dick said he took off. <laughs> just talking that stuff. You know, and then he said, Nick, can you imagine if I would have spent pastoring that church and then you would have came along? He said, what you would have done? I said, took the Bible and kicked your tail. I said, it would have been war. I said, guaranteed, I would have beat you any day. I said, I would have took you right in front of your people. He said, you would? I said, sure. I'll let the folks know my brother's a false brother. <laughs> He said, man, I'm glad I didn't do it. But they couldn't see. You know, it's like the enemies now who speak against it. But you when that telecast come on, you know what? They want to know what's going on. It's true. That's right. They right there looking. So we'll give them something to look at. <laughs> you hear about you gotta do church in Rocky Mountain. Do church in Newport. I'm just looking for God to do. I, I, I'm just looking for him to do. You know, I want a temple in New York. We got five television stations in New York. Uh, Rhode Island. Where is it? Rhode Island or Long Island? Which one of those islands in New York? Long Island. Oh, Rhode Island. Yeah? Oh, Rhode Long. We on Long Island. We on Long Island. We in Harlem. I remember I got calls and letters from Spanish Town Harlem. Talk to a Spanish sister. And uh, I called her from the list that Johnson gave me. I forgot her name. She said, it's Pastor Jenna. She said, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> it, 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 it's very something that they believe that it's me that's talking to them. But when she, well, I convinced her that it was me, you know, she began to tell me how she loved the program. She said, me and my boyfriend watch it. I said, really? She said, yeah. She said, don't say that to Pastor <laughs> <laughs> He said, we live together, not married. We both watch it. We both enjoy it. <laughs> I said, y'all live together. She said, Pastor, don't say nothing. Said, you know, but she know because she hear it. But we have five television stations. So I haven't been, we haven't been to New York yet to see what the telecast is doing. You know, but uh, God willing, maybe next year we get into New York. New York is a rough area. You get souls out of New York, brother. My God, that's a rough area. Baltimore. So we're just we're just looking to just keep hitting, keep hitting, keep building, keep building, keep building, keep building, keep building. Keep building. You know, and, and I'm glad that we don't have to beg somebody for their work. Mm -hmm. we can labor with our own hands. Right. And souls are coming. Mm -hmm. The prophet said the Lord told him a division is for an appointed time. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. I'll tell you one strip the Lord spoke to me when I was younger, mm -hmm. before I started pastoring. It was in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, mm -hmm. verse 22. Mm -hmm. It says, A little one shall become a thousand, mm -hmm. and a small one a strong nation. That's right. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. That's right. We start out with about 12 to 15 people. With about 12 or about 12 to 15 people that's what we start out with and now they're constantly coming in by the road constantly coming in in each location it's a blessing it's god knows it's a blessing to have the lord bless us with two temples in one month's time two temples that's almost unheard of today two temples in one month's time it's the lord's doing I was telling the saints, prove to yourself what you can do. So I said, man, if we can do this, oh, if you're not afraid to sacrifice, there's a lot you can do. It's true. 
That's the truth of it. All you need is for everyone to cooperate. Well, I can't see it. You don't have to see it. You don't have to see it. No more than Israel, by, by all means, they didn't see themselves coming out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Moses saw them coming out, though. That's right. So most people, they don't see it. Like Mike and William, they couldn't see it. They couldn't see it at all. They just couldn't see it. And we would talk about this every night, man. They couldn't even hit me. He told me straight up. He said, nobody gonna follow you, but fool. You just got the milk bottle good. Boy! What about you? He said, God ain't told you nothing. I didn't pay it to mind. Man, I think of Nick Cole. Nick was like, oh, man, elementary school then. You know, and... To see the work materialize you know, to this degree, and before I mean folk, when Rocky Mount Temple came up in Newport News, I went home, got on my knees, and told the Lord. I said, listen, I know you're with me, but you know what, I'd have been through so much this year, I kind of need some more proven. I thought of Gideon. Prove me here therewith. That's right. He said, I'm going to ask you just something small. You own the world, everything in it. I want Newport News and I want Rocky Mountain before this year go out. Okay. That's exactly what I told God. I said, not by January 1st. I said, I want it before this year go out, both places. Man, when Brother Lynch called me, I said, yeah. He said, the bank said, amen. Wonderful. I said, man, don't be surprised if you look out your window and find me gets breakdancing right in front of your house. <laughs> he said, I'll come out there and join you. <laughs> You know, because I know today to, to set up two temples in a month's time is unheard of. It's just unheard of. Only God can pull off something like that, man. Only God. That's true. Only God can pull off something like that. You know, I mean, to make banks, you know, favor you. Because the thing what happened, the woman that we usually deal with, she left that office after she dealt with us with Rocky Mount. The day of Rocky Mount settlement was her last day to hold that position. The last day. So a new woman came in the next day. So the woman that we was dealing with for a good while, she told her, listen, the church got another piece of property on the table. You make sure it go through. Now, a new woman, most times, you, gotta, you go through red tape with her. Everything fell right through. I mean, it fell right through, through God's goodness. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm God goes, I'm thankful. I'm, I'm really thankful. You know, God have a way of just making your enemies a liar. It makes you feel good when God makes you a liar. Sure. This scripture here in Isaiah mm -hmm. was one that was brought to me years ago. In fact, I wasn't even pastoring then. Uh, to talk about it when I had a medium afro and no gray. <laughs> and to be in it when I wear now my hair so close and half silver. But uh, when Dan came, we was on the tail end of the basement, you know. So he, he came in while we were still in the basement. There are those that passed on and some you never met. I mean, some good people. Elder Thompson, who was Dan's father. Mother Mills, my God, that was one strong old mother. Mother Carney. His brother Span. Uh, some passed on that I literally just forgot. Sometimes I just sit and think. Brother Jack Johnson, Brother Boyer, 
Uh, Mother Armstrong was the oldest mother that was with us. When she passed, I think she was about 102 or 103. You know, she was an old mother, you know. But the Lord brought us a long way from basement, you know, to Briar Road, to here. And I've been looking past here, you know. I am. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking way past it. I want, through the grace of God, a new headquarters temple on this on these grounds. And I, I just don't have this little small vision. That's why I, I, I'm. I'm not the type of person who, when they make a little progress, they get content. You should never be that way either. Because remember, whatever progress you make in life, you always can do more. It's true. Mm-hmm. When you feel as though you can't do more, you limit yourself. That's right. You know, and when you limit yourself, you put it and feel as though, oh, well, God done done all what he can do. He says who? <laughs> you know, in a message from Sunday, you, go, you know, you're going to lay your ultimatum and threaten the Lord. God cannot be threatened. That's right. Mm-hmm. God cannot be threatened. But, you know, but God many times will prove himself. Mm-hmm. And this is exactly what I ask him to do. Because in most cases, if you go tell people, I'm praying that God will give me two churches before the year go out in a month's time or two months time. They were like, well, I hope God, I hope God hear your prayer. They won't even say I'm praying with you. <laughs> They'd be like, I hope God hear it. In other words, I hope God hear it because I, I, I'm not, I don't believe it. Yeah, but you know, God proves himself. And I, and I, and I know he does. So and I'm, I'm very, I'm, very thankful how he answered our prayer and Newport News was right in, in, in time uh, because the brothers and sisters who were meeting at the brother's house the neighbors start complaining mm-hmm. and the city won't let them meet there mm-hmm. and here now Newport News <laughs> that fell right in the check I mean here we go to Norfolk State University and you that have been there you have bear witness it's packed we go to Hampton University, it's packed. But we can go to these places. Even when we went to Bennettsville for the first time, Bennettsville, South Carolina, the Sheriff's Department sent me a note telling me they want me to come back to Bennettsville, but the Sheriff's Department of Bennettsville, they want to sponsor the whole meeting. The Sheriff's Department wants to sponsor me. That's a blessing, man. And when we go back, I'm going to tell them I want the most racist area you can find. Because Bennettsville is where the Klan are thick. Thick. The Klan is there thick. I want the trouble spots. It's those places I love to go to and just stir up the hornet's nest with the gospel. Because this stuff doesn't. Someone say, what? You just want to cause trouble. No. Trouble is already there. Amen. You ain't got to cause trouble. Trouble is there before you get there. It's, true. You know, it's waiting on you. The thing is, a lot of men won't preach or say what we say or go where the places where God blesses to go because they're scared. It's true. I remember when Elder Goodman came here. So it's a call and running them uncle. Years ago, I remember he got up and said, I won't even say things over the air that Pastor Jimmy said. He said, I won't say it. He said, I'm over the radio. He said, but I'm not going to say the things Pastor Jimmy said. He said, God's with that boy. He said, God's with that boy. Yes, he is. God's with that boy. He said, because he won't say the things I say. He said that himself. <laughs> It's a blessing. I pray that God will send him more labors to the harvest. That is my prayer. That the Lord will send him more labors. Humble brothers. And you know what made a lot of religion so successful? It's because a lot of the men that work with the leader, even if he's a false prophet, they are supportive of the leader and they do exactly what he asked them to do. And humility must be a contributing factor. Which will, uh, I mean, if we set up a temple and put a brother there, he got everything at his hands. All he got to do, if, through the grace of God, if we're catching a fish, all 
he got to do is just wash them on the flame and maintain them. You know, turn them over once in a while. Don't let them burn. You know, just we all do is actually watch the stove, control the temperature. Is that right? Just take your time and season. Watch it. If it get turn it over, <laughs> then we just come by and check and see how you cooking, <laughs> huh? But then you get enough who want to be a master chef and make a mess, <laughs> and then go stuffing things in the fish that don't belong there. My uncle that died left me both churches. He left me 24th Street and left me Bristol. You know, we got to go through some paperwork and whatnot and get stuff, you know, every, get all the cobwebs out. You know, he told me, he said, I don't want the church to have it. I want you to have it. He said, now, I'm not giving the first church. I'm giving it to you. G now. Yeah, get you. Yeah, he said, you do what you want. Brother. But I said, well, you know, so got to get the Lord together and get that, you know, all that red tape out. But Bristol, you know, is not that far from Trenton. Mm -hmm. See, Bristol ain't far from Trenton at all. In fact, Bristol's only about 15 or 20 minutes from Trenton, New Jersey. You know, so God willing, once, once you know, get in Bristol the Lord's will, get things remodeled, get things done. You, you got Trenton in those Bucks County, because out, listen folks, the telecast all out there. And the thing about it, where men don't get results, God bless us to get it. That's true. That's something. I mean, men that have been preaching for years don't get no results. We can go in the same place through the grace of God and get a whole bunch of results. So next year, through the grace of God, we're looking to get a meeting in Dover, Delaware. We're looking to get in the Dover. Uh, there's so many areas. I mean, New York. I'm looking to spend like three weeks in Tide Water area at about three universities, Norfolk, Hampton, and Newport News. Three weeks. What are you doing? Fishing, building up membership. Because we have a church to direct everybody to. That's right. Come over here. That's right, that's true. Come over here, show it. You go there and fish. Go to do the same thing in Florida. Build up the work of the Lord. Sit, go there about three, Rocky Mountain. Labor there for about three weeks. Get them over there. Fishing chips. You get them over there. <laughs> See? And what we're doing when we set the brothers up, we're not we're eliminating unilateral rule. What I mean is this. What I'm doing is when I set a brother there, we set along with him about three or four more brothers for the purpose of decision making. So if he want to make a decision, he those four or five must come together and it must be a group decision. <laughs> you know, to eliminate I'm, you know, the big eye and, you know, I want to eliminate Caesar. Mm -hmm. I, I let Caesar stay where he at. Let Napoleon stay where he at. You know, I don't want no one coming in with throwing the hands in. You know, you know folk become Napoleon, man. And, and, and it's sad. So uh, there's it's a lot of restructuring that we're doing. A lot of restructuring that we're doing. And I'm grateful for the brothers that have been hanging with us. Those that are humble, I'm, I'm glad for them. I really am. Uh, I'm only one person. And I will never say, like Bishop Johnson said, I want to do it all myself. I don't. Johnson was a young man when he died, man. The man was only 62 years old. That's young. 62. That's young. You know? So, uh, I want to be here a while. Long while. You know? I, I, my desire is to be here until the Lord comes. I want to say that's long. We don't know that. That can be 12 o'clock at night. If, if you want to. I don't believe he will, though, you know, you know, because I see what the scripture says. That's why I have to put in if you want to. I have to put that clause, you know. But uh, it's a lot to be done. 
It's a lot of work. I must thank God much for the telecast, man. I mean, we, we have to thank God for the telecast, bro. That, you know, that's one reason why I talked to Brother Zeke White. There's a new public broadcast station called PCN that's covering, I think, the whole state of Pennsylvania. I've seen programs from it out of Pittsburgh. Man, Pittsburgh is up there. Pittsburgh is near Ohio. You know, so I talked to her to told her, you know, try to get some information on it. Uh, see that they do religious programming, you know, you know, tell them know we're interested in for religious programming and you know, how many, you know, whatever we got to do to get on it. You know, I mean to cover the whole state of Pennsylvania, man. Uh, we have Harrisburg again. Uh, we have areas in Pennsylvania we never had. Pittsburgh and all them other areas, yes. We want to reach the people. We want to get into Reading next year. And in Reading, Pennsylvania, that's practically predominant white brothers and sisters. And I received calls from them. They want us in Reading. So we're going to get uh, these areas set up in advance. We're going to get brothers to go through these areas, find a place in advance, get the places, get them reserved. So when the dates roll around, all we can do is go boom. So, it's a lot of souls to reach. They're there. The crusade team, the foot soldiers, got to be able to get more than five. Next year, we want you to do better. I mean, you go to areas like Allentown, Reading. Hey, take about 20. Put the foot soldiers out there, you know, go through the area, through the neighborhoods and whatnot. You know, and get them flyers out there. Believe it or not, it isn't just the telecast that brings the people, though. The foot soldiers help do it, too. That's true. So the flyers and whatnot, they help do it. That All that helps get the gospel out. Do you know that? All that, when Sister Bailey and her team get together, man, and send all them flyers out to the different churches and mosques and synagogues and business and all that, all that is helping actually get the gospel out. That's, right. That's exactly what it is. True. You're literally helping getting the gospel out. You're helping bringing sheep in. The Bible talk about helps. Right. Give me 1 Corinthians 12, 28. First Corinthians chapter 12. And at verse 28, mm -hmm. and God has set some in the church, first apostles, mm -hmm. secondarily prophets, mm -hmm. thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps. See that? Mm -hmm. Helps. What else? Governments, mm -hmm. diversities of tongues. Yep. Are all apostles. Nope. Are all prophets. Nope. Are all teachers. Nope. Are all workers of miracles. Nope. Have all the gifts of healing. Nope. Do all speak with tongues. Just believe it. Yeah. Do all interpret? Nope. But covers earnestly the best gifts. And what? And yet show I unto you in more excellent way. So, what you may look at as small. That's right. No, it isn't. It's true. We want to get into Atlantic City next year. <coughs> if we can't find a place in Atlantic City, we'll go back to Pleasantville. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, we, we want to hit. Hit with the impact. Every temple we set up through the grace of God, I'm praying that Lord bless each temple with their own bus. Mm -hmm. All that, all that. That's right. So I'm saying, you talking money, yeah. Yes. Faith and money. Yes. Sure. Yes. Folks got this old narrow vision, I just don't. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to, you know why? You look at these false prophets, mm -hmm. when they get in their mind to do something, don't fall rally behind and get it done. I mean, they work hard to send folk to hell. <laughs> Certainly they do. They work hard to do it. And so all this, the flyers and the letters and uh, the studio that's running out all these, running all these tapes off and all that, all that. So I say, well, how do people ordering tapes? Is helping bring in souls. Because when they get those tapes, they've given them to other people. That's right. 
They are exposing the people to it that never even heard of it. Never seen it. So, and this is what people fail to realize. It is nothing you're doing that you may look at as small. That's right. That's because it's affecting the lives of people. That's right. That's exactly what it is. It's affecting the lives of people. You have no idea how the public appreciate First Church and the Truth of God telecast. You don't have no idea. I'm out there. I mean, I'm out there in many parts of the country. I see how folks appreciate it. When I go in the airports and people just talk about it, different parts of the country, man, people just love it. Just love it. The minister in Zimbabwe that has the following from uh, eight to 10,000 people, he got the telecast tapes down there. The saints in London sent the tapes to him. He plays them in his church. And they said they never heard nothing like it. Never heard nothing like it. My God, I can't wait to get into Africa. Amen. So God bless us. It be God's will to go into Africa. We're going to contact them and see what dates they got in mind so we can plan in advance. Out of all the areas of that I go, I long to go to Africa more than any other place, particularly Egypt. That's the place I long to go more than any of the other locations, particularly just Egypt. I mean, this is where the, I, I, I can't even imagine the Red Sea separating them. You know, wouldn't that be something? The Lord bless to go there and I smoke the waters in the Africa again. I'd probably be so scared I won't even move. You know, I'd probably just sit there frozen solid. But to think of how the water separate and the duel between Moses and Pharaoh, so much, almost the majority of the scriptures was fulfilled in Africa. Right. Almost the majority of the scriptures was fulfilled in Africa. When you read Daniel and read about Nebuchadnezzar and all of that, all that took place down in Africa. Right. All that babbling and all that, all that was down here in Africa. Right. You know, so... To go to the continent where the first father lived, the first man, and the first woman. When I was on in Marisha, there was a man talking to me. And he said, do you think Adam, uh, what nationality do you think he was? I said, oh, he was African. He said, I don't think so. I said, the first man, the first woman was an African man. He said, really? And it's showing in the book of Genesis of the waters that surround the garden. Then it says, of that land of Ethiopia. I said, where's Ethiopia? He said, I didn't know that was in the Bible. He said, it took you to come all the way from the States to come here. He said, now nah, I learned something. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know. So, just, just the idea to go to the land. In Mauritius, there's a certain area of the Mauritius Island where there's only no place in the world like this one section of the island. One section of the island, the dirt is about nine or ten different colors. It's not dye, it's not paint. The dirt is just literally like a rainbow. It is hills of it, like a rainbow, in about ten different colors. It's the original color of the soil. I know it's nothing like it. And if you look at it, it's the exact color of the tone of people's skin. I've never seen nothing like it. It was funny because with me, June, and uh, Savannah and other brothers who was there looking, uh, June went over there and said, Hey, Pastor, I found me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, It's the darkest thing on here. I found me. <laughs> so he went and got some more, he went and brought some dirt over at the table. He said, Yeah, I found you. Here it is. He <laughs> dropped it in my hand. It was almost the exact color of my skin. He brought the dirt over, it was almost the exact color of my skin. <laughs> you think how God can just scoop man from the dust of the earth, farm man from the scalp of the earth. You know, I'm telling you, man, it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So, uh, the way one message can pull so many people, one message. 
can affect foreign countries. You know, with Simbali and Brother um, uh, Haji, uh, to God, through them, opens up doors to foreign, to French-speaking foreign countries. Where I can go to any country now and speak French and take them with me and get the gospel over to them. For them brothers can interpret anything I say. I mean anything. I remember I asked him, are you listening? <laughs> and somebody was like, I love him. <laughs> I had to look at it. So I said it again, are you listening? <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> but down to the letter. I'm praying that God send them brothers that can speak Arabic fluently. Brother, you speak Arabic, don't you? A little bit. A little bit. It's like anything, though. When you don't do it all the time, you try to lose it. I thank God for the brother here. What part of Africa are you originally from? Um, a country called Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. It's on the west coast of Africa between the land and the ocean. What major... Uh, Area they're from like Nigeria, Nigeria. Near Nigeria, Nigeria and Ghana, near those areas. Yeah, Nigeria, um, Ghana, Cameroon. Cameroon. Now this brother was raised Sunni Muslim. Raised a Sunni Muslim. It's like some a lot of the saints at the Marisha Church, many of them were raised Hindu and raised Muslim. Raised that way. The message of God have a very strong impact. It can undo any knot that the devil ties. You know, so I'm glad that we don't have a stagnant ministry. I had to drive me up a wall. I hate things to be stagnant. I can't stand it. God, I love to see progress. I love it. So God bless us, you know. Church, got two two more temples now in one month's time. That's truly the work of God. Absolutely. Remember again, Brother Alfred and his uh, children in prayer. Finish up uh, Habakkuk so we can knock off, Brother. Mm -hmm. Second chapter, book of Habakkuk. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, mm -hmm. but at the end it shall speak and not lie. That's proof. Amen. It speaks and not it's lie. It manifests. Mm -hmm. And it don't lie. Though it tarry. Though it wait. Wait for it. Yeah. Why, why it's waiting yeah. to come. That's right. You wait for it. That's right. That's right. That's what I was doing. Yeah. I was waiting for it. Sometimes got impatient. Mike would tell me more. Ready to start yet? <laughs> Is it time yet? I was like, Mike, I don't, I don't know when it's going to start. He said, well, where the work going to start at? He said, I told him, I said, I don't know. Even him, though. All right, the Lord talked to you so much, where you going to start at? I said, I don't know. He said, you see that fool? <laughs> he said, God ain't never told nobody to go somewhere, and then they didn't know where it was going. I said, he told Abraham. He said, you ain't Abraham. <laughs> but God told Abraham to go, and Abraham knew it's not where he was going. That's true. But he believed God. That God was guiding him right. That's right. That's what kept me going. I believed that God was guiding me right. right. You know, and to put a, 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 a word in our tongue. One thing about it, the truth of God is distinguished from any television program that is being aired and that have ever been aired. Amen. There is not a religious program on television like it, similar to it. It's distinguished. They can't get me mixed up with no television preachers. That's true. That's true. None. And I'm glad about that. Amen. Listen. Though it tarry. Though it tarry. Wait for it. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will come. It will not tarry. God is good, isn't he? Mm -hmm. So I find it is very encouraging, brothers and sisters. Let us continue to prayer. We pray next year. We want more progress. Certainly we do. Next year we want to do more. Much more. Let us be prayerful. We 
helpers of one another. Don't try to backstab the work of God and trash the work of God. Because God is with us. When I say God is with us, I ain't just talking about me. God is with us. He has proven me he's with us. The devil done tried almost everything. But God still left me with us. Karen that came heavy. Sometimes Karen is not as heavy as you think. You just look that way. Sometimes you see waters going real strong and they don't look like you cross them until you get in it. In other words, it's not strong enough to wash you downstream. You can go, it, it may shake you, but you can still walk across it. So God, he has been, he is good. So God willing, pray that God give us a safe flight. We'll be in New Orleans. God willing, fly out tomorrow. Get back next week. Not to be in Florence, very stylful. And if they have it towards the weekend, we're just going to stay there and have service. Go up to Rocky Mountain Saturday to work and get back. We got to that youth conference in Jamaica. Get back the 27th, go to North of the 28th, make settlement the 29th, and get right back here. Then we got New Year's service. That's a good way to close out the year, though, isn't it? Let us all stand. The that is able to keep you from falling and present you falling before the presence of his glory of exceeding joy. On the wise God, our Lord, and the Savior Jesus Christ, and be glory and power both now and forever. The brothers and sisters say, Amen.